in society would be considered a loser, a loner, someone that doesn't really fit into any structure set up in this world. And though I don't fit in anywhere, I'm still a cog within this machine. When looking at society as a whole, I can't help but think of DJ Cobbler's Scorn video. In that video, he talks about how the machine isn't necessarily malicious, it's just doing what the machine was made to do. Nothing personal to you directly. It's just business. You might find yourself to be a victim within this machine, but to the machine, you're only part of the process. The machine only does what the machine was created to do, and the machine only continues to do so because we collectively allow it to. You all believe that giving in to this oppression was a good idea, so long as it was within your box of acceptance. Well, welcome to the machine. It's too bad that you didn't notice that the very machine that you were feeding and supporting would one day come for you as well. Well, call me Zach De La Roca because I'm rage against the machine! Without the hypocrisy. Today, I'll be attacking YouTube, their sex and nudity guidelines mainly. Let's begin. YouTube continually virtue signals that their policies are there to protect the community and keep it safe, while also giving creators the freedom to express themselves. But anyone with a brain can see that's a crock of shit. That is one big pile of shit. Go to any drama channel and take your pick of people that have gotten away with different types of predatory practices on this site. Look at YouTube and what questionable content they peddle towards us and children. Look at the kind of advertisements that show up in your ads. Look at the false copywriters getting away with criminal acts and YouTube giving them the power to do so. Oh, and look at the favoritism that YouTube plays with content creators. Oh, we'll definitely be getting into that one. But as you can see, it's all lies. Liar! YouTube doesn't care about you, nor the children, nor the community. It's just PRBS, and if you believe any of their words, you are a fool. I still can't believe that in order to get in contact with a real person on YouTube, you have to go to Twitter, a whole different site, and hope that you're even seen when having problems. Okay, that is an example of completely unprofessional behavior. This is not only completely unprofessional, but I honestly question why anyone finds this acceptable. Let me repeat myself so that this really sinks in. If you ever have any problems on YouTube as a creator, you need to go to a completely different site that isn't YouTube and hope that that YouTube Twitter account sees your problems or some bigger channel covers your story. And more than likely, if you're a small creator, that ain't happening. The catalyst for why I'm even making this video is because back in December, I posted a video of me no hitting all bosses, except one, in an H game called Flip Witch. I spent hours on making that thumbnail, and I'm very proud of it today. And I spent two full weeks painstakingly censoring all the boss ladies in that game in a fun, clever, and entertaining way. All the censoring was done in a tasteful manner, and I would consider it art. On the thumbnail I made, all the ladies had boob pasties on, and they were all covered up, and within the sex and nudity guidelines. I would definitely say it fell under gray area, but it still was within the guidelines. None of that will even matter at the end of this video, though. It seemed like the algorithm also agreed with me because my video had no problem being uploaded and recommended for three days straight. It wasn't until some very sad, very pathetic losers the who, the her. that can't handle boobs came into my video and falsely reported it. And these people are petty. I don't have to tell you that pettiness happens. Just go on Twitter. 
be funny if it weren't so pathetic. No, what the heck, I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> Before all that though, it did seem as though YouTube just wanted to shadow ban the video and have it drift into obscurity. But the only problem was that it was getting a lot of traffic. People couldn't believe that YouTube was okay with such a thumbnail as mine. These fictional ladies on my thumbnail with boob pasties on was enough to make everyone go crazy. This is the state of our world and how pathetic people are in this day and age. Some people in the comments called my thumbnail pornography, and others said I'd be nuked from orbit by YouTube. But you know what happened? Nothing. For three straight days, my video had no issue. The algorithm didn't find any problem with it, and that's because I was within the sex and nudity guidelines, whether you believe it or not. What you see on the thumbnail is the actual bosses from that game. The title for the video was strictly called Flip Witch All Bosses. It was always just about the boss fights and nothing more. Thankfully, out of pure spite, I uploaded a fully censored version for the haters. In the original, I didn't cover up the sprites that had one pixel for nipples because I didn't think it was necessary. Look, I know that they say that you can fap to anything if you try hard enough, but this ain't it. No, the focus of my video was strictly on the bosses, the gameplay, and taking no damage while fighting them. Despite all the comments congratulating me beating the game one-handed, I didn't ever fap to this game once. Mirror? Sure, eight hours one time in fact, but Flip Witch? No. The whole reason I even made a boss rush video on this game is because it's genuinely a good game, and I wanted to share that. That's why I spent two full weeks keyframing those censorship images over the ladies. I made that video with heart and passion. I even added a warning intro saying that this game has boobs, just in case you missed the thumbnail. Now that Lenny face, that could be incriminating, right? Well, I want to show you something. You see that? You see what it says? It says I'm an entertainer. YouTube has turned boobs into a joke, basically making women into jokes. <laughs> Good job, YouTube. If you want me to deconstruct it, the Lenny face was added for comedic effect. The whole point is that I understand that this is an H game, and being aware of that is the joke. You know, boobs, am I right, fellas? <laughs> what YouTuber hasn't done that? While the game clearly is an H game, and I'm poking fun at that in the warning intro, everything is covered up. Except for the one pixel nipples, which honestly, like I said, I don't see a problem. So the joke is this game has boobs, and boobs equal funny. <laughs> now like I said before, it seemed as though YouTube wanted my video to drift into obscurity. But that couldn't happen. Too many people were sharing it. Thanks. Too many people were talking about it, and it showed back up in people's recommended once more. With all these people losing their minds, and with all the pathetic losers reporting my video, this couldn't go on any longer. So, did I get nuked by YouTube from orbit like everyone was claiming I would? No. Well, certainly if my content was truly outside of the guidelines and pornography, I would have at least gotten a strike, right? Nope. So what did they do then? They gave me a warning. That's it. Oh, and falsely took down my video. They pretty much took down my video, slapped me on the wrist, and said, don't do something you're not guilty of ever again. I still stand by my statement that I did nothing wrong, and YouTube did nothing to prove to me otherwise. If anything, what YouTube should have done after my video got reported is that they should have just age restricted it, and that's it. But they did me dirty. They full on took the original video down, gave me a warning, and they also age restricted my fully censored video. Are you kidding me? All right, YouTube, you wanna play? Let's fucking play. If you type in Flip Witch right now, you'll probably see H Game Lover's video being advertised to you at the top of the list or somewhere near it. Now this channel censored part one and two, but beyond that, there is no censorship. I mean, look at that thumbnail. It's now been up for a full month, 20K views, and no age restriction. 
let's look at my video where I actually put in some damn effort into my censorship to make the video fun and entertaining to watch. For some reason, my video is age restricted. What's even more egregious to me is the lack of effort within their censoring. This has got to be the laziest censoring I have ever seen. On the ghost boss lady, they just slapped a mosaic on the ghost boss. What's worse is the boobs bounce outside of that mosaic, so you can see full on nipple. And no, it's not covered by boob pasties. And again, part three and above, no censorship on the thumbnail. I'm sorry, where are all the people losing their shit to this? And then there's Kuzume. This guy should have been shut down years ago. This guy is such a piece of shit, and I'll tell you exactly why. First off, let's start off with his name. He used to go by Horhoristo, but now he goes by Kuzumek. And what does Kuzumek mean? Natalie Portman, take it away. What is your favorite curse word? There's one in Hebrew. Well, it's actually in Arabic, but you use it in Israel. Kuzumek. It means your mother's vagina. Second, look at his content. Or maybe it's best you don't. Every single thumbnail he has on his channel is sexualized bore. Some of the games he plays are fetishistic, like eating people, then farting, and sometimes pooping them out in a diaper. No, I'm not kidding. And the most disgusting and unforgivable thing he's done for me personally, is hiding the sauce of the H games behind his Patreon. This guy will make a video showing off an H game, keep the video title vague, delete any comments telling you what the title of the game is, and paywall that information behind his Patreon. These games are not his. He does not own them, and yet he has the goal to take someone else's work and put it behind a paywall. Absolutely disgusting. Where are all the people losing their shit to this? I am honestly deeply offended in more ways than one. I'm offended by the hypocritical prudes, I am offended by the people that falsely reported my video, and I'm immensely offended by YouTube for falsely accusing me of something that they couldn't even properly prove. On top of that, when I did appeal the video being taken down, the appeal was almost immediately rejected. Remember when I said the only way to get in contact with a real person on YouTube is through their Twitter account? Yeah. No real person actually reviewed my video like they claim, and there is so much evidence to prove that no real person actually looks at this stuff ever. I think it's about high time we make YouTube prove their claims from now on. Because of their false claims of reviewing my video, for better or worse, the video was officially dead. YouTube had killed it. If you don't know, you're only granted one appeal per video, and if you're rejected, that's it. There's no coming back. So this is where we hit F in the chat and say goodbye to one of my most popular and controversial videos I've ever uploaded thus far on YouTube. You were a good one. You taught me a lot. And your death will not go in vain. Now, I've already exposed YouTube before, doing shady things, such as having a secret social credit score system, as well as policing, shadow banning, and deleting comments. As I've already said, YouTube can get away with all of this because we allow it, because we're complacent. Until we stop being complacent, this will continue and get worse. But I'm doing my part making this video. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. And I hope you guys do yours. YouTube accused me of breaking their sex and nudity guidelines, so surely they have tons of evidence to show me this, right? <laughs> you know the answer by now. No, they don't. If you go into the warning or strike, there's supposed to be evidence as to why you got it. That's how it should work. You prove that someone is guilty of something and then you take the action. But this is how broken the system is. If you look at the timestamp of the supposed problematic part that they gave this video, you'll see there's only one part in the video they flagged as inappropriate. Two minutes, 59 seconds. Oh no, 
Whatever could it be? A nip slip, perhaps? Maybe I missed an edit. Nope. It's a lot of literal nothing. This incriminating evidence that I did something wrong is nothing. YouTube is so lazy, they just picked a random part in my video that has nothing going on in it. That again also proves that no real person is actually looking at any of this. YouTube, I don't like being accused of things that aren't true. And if you can't completely prove that I did anything wrong, shut your fucking mouth. They just marked a random part on my video that had nothing on it and they falsely claimed it to be inappropriate. They didn't explain their reasoning, they didn't prove their accusation, they just looked like a damned fool. If YouTube is too lazy to put in a little bit of work and actually timestamp a real problematic part in my video and prove it with details, they have no right to accuse me of these claims. I, however, YouTube, do have the receipts, and I am wholeheartedly going to enjoy exposing you for the garbage that you are. Oh, and the evidence that YouTube brought up to age restrict my fully censored video? <laughs> Again, incriminating stuff, guys. You got me. A white silhouette. What a fucking joke. Let's continue going further into this circus and seeing how much more laughable it gets. So in order for the 90 day warning to go into effect, you have to take a training course. You gotta learn what you did wrong and prove that you've been reformed. I'm gonna spoil it right now. These questions are absolutely atrocious. They don't teach you anything and they seem to be constantly gaslighting you. Scenarios are so specific that you're just asking yourself, who's actually making this content? Nobody. And the worst part is that none of the questions in the training ever went into my situation of my gray area. You know, like playing a video game that happens to be an H game, but doesn't focus on the H. That kind of gray area. You know, the gray area where video games are the highest form of art. I am completely dissatisfied with YouTube's rules and guidelines. I don't believe they're clear nor concise enough to properly understand. So much so that I don't even think YouTube understands them. I do, however, believe that YouTube does this on purpose so that they can deem whatever they want, however they want. I would say this grasp for control is rather pathetic, cowardly, and pretty damn childish. YouTube should make it crystal clear what is and isn't okay, and they should have examples of those crystal clear rules and guidelines with images clearly depicting what is and isn't okay. With that said, let's take a look at the questions in this training course, something that not many viewers get to see. Here's the first question. Is it okay to talk about sex and discuss all your favorite sex positions so long as you are an educational channel and not acting it out? Apparently yes, but with my research, I found you don't need to be an educational channel to do this, nor do you need to follow any of YouTube's guidelines. Oh, we'll get to that at the end. Question two, is it okay to upload two animals having sex? YouTube says yes, but within the right context. However, they did my man Urban Rescue Ranch very dirty. If you don't know Urban Rescue Ranch, it's a beautiful channel with a wholesome man that bought a piece of land, lived in a crack house, slowly built up his property into an amazing animal rescue facility, and helps animals while educating people about that world in a fun and entertaining way. He is literally a certified wildlife rehabilitationist, and yet his video got demonetized when he showed two of his tortoises mating. And they've been getting very well acquainted, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but I can't show you what I mean because I got demonetized in the last video for doing that. So YouTube, you want to go ahead and tell me what happened there? Because this man clearly falls under the right context as these animals are his on his rescue property. Question three, does it violate YouTube guidelines if a person is doing a video on protests around the world and one of those protests happens to be nudity? The answer is no, says YouTube, because this is journalism and nudity is within the context of that journalism. In the blurb, it says that YouTube may allow nudity when there's enough artistic, documentary, educational, or scientific context. This video would be age restricted, but not removed. I want you all to remember this when we catch YouTube in 4K. Question four, 
Is it acceptable to make a reaction video about sex scenes in a movie, so long as the sex isn't shown and the language stays clean? Apparently, yes, you can. My question is, who's making this content? This is way too specific. I looked it up, and there's really not many people making this content. And for good reason. It's lame! I also find it hilarious that YouTube added fluff like the video's description had the movie's name, director, lead director, the year it was made, etc. That part actually made me laugh out loud because nobody's really doing that, like at all. It really felt like YouTube was trying to gaslight me into believing that this crap was actually important. It's so funny how they just keep going with it too in the question. Here's the reality of things. YouTube and their guidelines have made content creators so scared and disingenuous that anything sexual equals funny. Nobody is going to even attempt to navigate the sexual content because it's so incredibly vague and stupid and it's just not worth it. Also, I know YouTube's gaslighting me because beyond the four reaction videos I watched, the channels that have movie sex scenes are movie clip channels. There's nobody reacting to anything. There's no commentary. It's just the straight up sex scene from the movie and there's kissing, there's touching, and there's implications everywhere. I was quite surprised when seeing a very sexual, very non-age restricted PETA commercial at the top of the search results. That is very explicit material you got there, YouTube. For all ages, you say. Question five. Can a channel upload a video about fetish communities? This footage has people in their BDSM outfits talking about BDSM. The person talks about their sexual preferences and how consent is sexy. It gives proper education to how to safely do things and respect one another. Wow, that sounds not only really interesting, but also educational. I would say yes, this is 100% allowed on YouTube. But they say no fetish content allowed on YouTube, and yet Kuzumek exists, along with a lot of other YouTube creators. Question 6. Can you show sex toys in your video? The answer is yes, as Moist Critical is known for his dildo collection. As long as you ain't doing nothing naughty with it, they ain't no problem. Easy. Question 7. Can museum YouTube channels show sexual art? I would say, duh, you just said museum channel. This question is dumb because you brought up that they're a museum channel. This question didn't tell me whether a regular person can do this or not, just more gaslighting. Also, I'd consider Praveen a history and education channel. I mean, this guy actually goes out to all of the temples and explains the architecture and statues, along with some crazy theories that don't seem so far-fetched. He's basically the Indian version of the Aliens guy. In fact, he showed up on that show once before. This guy is a great example of YouTube not understanding nor following their own rules and guidelines. Praveen recently made a video about how he has to worry about the algorithm attacking his channel every year at the beginning of the year. His videos are either getting demonetized, even though there was no problem with them before, or straight up striked. This guy is an educational professional, and yet you treat him like trash. He doesn't deserve this. None of us deserve this. None of us deserve your lies and your abuse of power, YouTube. Even beyond all that, using terms like sexually arousing and sexually gratifying is stupid because that's subjective. Some people like feet, some people like boobs, some people like butts, some people like thighs, and some people like other things. If a girl or guy is hot to you, she or he is both sexually arousing and sexually gratifying automatically, whether they mean to or not. Sexualization and objectification is something we all humans do, whether you are a guy or a girl. There's no need to feel ashamed or guilty of this because it's just human nature. If anyone ever tries to dispute this, I would highly recommend looking into their history and calling them out for the hypocrites that they are. And when I say history, I'm not just talking about the internet. I'm talking about what movies and series they watch, what books they read, what drawings they make. You see, some people get their jollies visually, while others get it out of their imaginations. They're just as filthy and dirty-minded as you. 
However, they have a hypocritical superiority complex. Everyone sexualizes and objectifies everyone. How do I know this? Sex sells. Companies know it, creators know it, YouTube knows it, everyone knows it. It's no wonder why everyone's so sexually frustrated in this world. You have sex constantly pushed on you, and yet you're told it's bad, it's sinful, shameful, and you should feel guilty for liking it. That is really messed up. Something that is completely natural and shouldn't be a big deal is a big deal because of how taboo society has made it. And you know what tabooing something does? It only makes it more tempting and more desirable. Listen, everyone jackhammers, and if you don't, Mother Nature takes care of you, unless you're a mystic that meditates and eats onion and banana goo. Almost everyone jackhammers, it's no secret, and if you're not manning your own jackhammer, you're playing co-op with another person. <laughs> Except for the Sigma Milk Giga <laughs> Oh. It's all natural, it's healthy, and it's comforting knowing that everyone does it from time to time. If everyone could be more honest with themselves, we could be in a better place. It's both the prudes and the degenerates that have caused the societal damage. The prudes created the high amount of sexual frustration we have today, and they want to continually dictate what we can and can't consume. And the degenerates, well they make everything about jackhammer. They're almost always lazy and they seek instant gratification all the time. They both have a problem. Both of them have very skewed perspectives on sex, sexuality, eroticism, etc. And when I say prudes, I'm not just talking about the Christian conservative values people. The liberals have done more than enough damage here. They not only came in and tried to destroy sexuality in our entertainment, but they also attacked beauty while hypocritically supporting sex workers. Left wing, right wing, it's all the same bullshit. It's all the same damn bird, and I encourage you to rebel against both. Sex isn't always about pleasure. Sometimes it's done in parody, and other times it's done to make the audience feel deeply uncomfortable. Look at Fear and Hunger. That game doesn't focus on sex in an erotic way. It uses it in a way to instill fear and discomfort into you. Dante's Inferno has the very disturbing lust boss lady. And then there's Berserk. Berserk definitely has moments that are very arousing, but they're also usually in a grotesque, disturbing, and uncomfortable way. What I really loved about Berserk is that it really helped me be able to examine myself while digesting its content and reflecting on those thought-provoking ideas. It was very stimulating in all aspects, and it's a damn good story, up to about the sea arc. Then it kind of falls off. What I'm getting at here is that sex is not necessarily just about pleasure. There's also the uncomfortable side of it, and it's a great way to invoke emotions and explore ideas. Sex has many faces, and all of those faces should be able to be explored without any shame or guilt looming around it. There's also nothing wrong with making something all about the pleasure side of things. Flip Witch was so much fun, and it was enjoyable throughout the whole experience. I didn't feel the need to fap but I was absolutely delighted and pleased with the aesthetic of the game. Just because something is sexual and pleasurable doesn't mean you want to necessarily fap to it, and I think a lot of people need to grow up and figure that out. They also need to learn the difference between fiction and reality. Sometimes, the aesthetic of the nudity or sexuality is simply enough for one to be content. At the same time, there is nothing wrong with you enjoying yourself beyond that. Just keep it in moderation. Now this is the part where I was going to expose YouTube's sex annuity guidelines, hypocrisy, and lies. However, it got so much more worse. So much so that I had to alter my script. Upon my search of finding this type of material to call YouTube out on, I also came across videos of child exploitation. I don't know why YouTube thinks it's okay to have real young children in two-piece bikini swimwear strutting on catwalks under search results such as bikini model, lingerie model, and panty model, but that is not okay. Why am I getting deja vu all of a sudden? Oh, that's right, this was one of the adpocalypses. 
As soon as I saw this, I called this number. And if you see anything like this yourself during your search results, I advise you to call this number as well. Well, that sure went from zero to 100 real fast, didn't it? And we haven't even started yet. YouTube's already dug its grave. But let's go ahead and make them dig it deeper. Before I do this though, I just want to say I don't have a problem with most of these things existing. Yes, a lot of these things should be age restricted according to YouTube's sex and nudity guidelines or straight up terminated. But I understand why these channels don't age restrict their content. Nobody in their right mind would willingly age restrict their own video because that instantly kills it. YouTube's age restriction is completely broken. Age restricting any video automatically kills any reach and monetization. Your video will not show up in the recommendations and you can't make any money off of it either. YouTube punishes the content creator for properly labeling their video. Instead of making a toggle button for the adults to choose whether or not they want to see this mature material or not, they just outright discourage it by punishing the content creator. If all these rappers, these pasty girls, these lingerie models, these pole dancers all age restricted their videos, they not only wouldn't be seen, they wouldn't be getting any ad revenue. I guess I kind of just spoiled some of the content I'm going to expose, but believe me when I say, you'll still be surprised. I don't know about you, but by looking at what garbage advertisers we get on YouTube already, I'm sure there's more than enough businesses willing to put their ads on mature and edgy content. YouTube has no excuse for why this age restriction option is so broken. I personally believe that mature and edgy content should exist on YouTube and advertisers really shouldn't care what video their advertisements are on. It's not like they're personally individually choosing to support a certain content like they do on television. Anderson Cooper 360, brought to you by Pfizer. Making a difference. Brought to you by Pfizer. CNN Tonight. Brought to you by Pfizer. George Stephanopoulos is brought to you by Pfizer. This weather report brought to you by Pfizer. Today's countdown to the royal wedding is brought to you by Pfizer. Television and YouTube are two completely different things. The way you should see advertisements on YouTube is the same way you look at advertisements on any other site on the internet. However, some advertisers should be a little bit more worried that I just caught them supporting children strutting down catwalks in bikinis. Sure, it's a fashion show, but it doesn't make it any less disturbing. Kinda weird that everyone in the crowd is an adult watching these little children Kinda weird that everybody in the crowd is an adult watching these little children flaunting their stuff. But then again, I don't really understand the rich people life, nor do I really want to. Back to what I was saying though, YouTube should function like how Newgrounds does. On Newgrounds, you can adjust the content you want to see right there at the top of the website. And the adult content can't be accessed without an account. That toggle option would make it really fast and easy for parents to be able to switch between their own regular content and what content they want their kids to see, all on the same account. As I said, I completely understand why all these channels don't age restrict their material, but YouTube, what's your excuse for allowing these channels to do so? You don't have one, at least not a good one. My advice to anyone here is if you're ever trying to find the answer to anything, always follow the money. Remember what I said, sex sells and YouTube knows it. Clearly, there is a lucrative partnership with some of these people and their sexual content that is clearly outside of the guidelines. That is why they get away with it. And I highly doubt that these videos are being demonetized. Ugh, this is so, so much work. I'm losing motivation. Interesting.
Where's your motivation? Cast aside, there's no coming home. Let's have some fun. We're burning chaos in the wind. Drifting in the ocean all alone. Show me your motivation. Let's do this. Some of these videos I'll be talking about have a laughable disclaimer at the beginning of them that claim that they aren't for sexual gratification, while also advertising their social media, Patreon, and OnlyFans. I'm gonna be brutally honest here. These people know what they're doing. The viewers know what they're doing. And most importantly, YouTube knows what they're doing. All these categories and videos that I bring up are all unage restricted, meaning that anyone can view these at any time and without a YouTube account. The most telling thing of all is that some of these pornographic videos are age restricted, meaning that YouTube knows that these videos exist and yet are perfectly fine with this sexually gratifying and pornographic content being on their site. That completely goes against the supposed claims in their guidelines. But as I always say, the hypocrites are always the loudest. I'm not kidding when I say some of the meta I found on YouTube would make even the Twitch girls blush. But let's start off with the less offensive material first. Now obviously, I can't show you any of this, which is quite telling on its own. So either you gotta take my word for it or search it up yourself. If you decide to search this stuff up though, I encourage you to do so logged in, as you'll not only get more content within that search result, but you'll also get more recommendations after viewing this stuff. You'll go down quite the rabbit hole. Before you begin, go ahead and read YouTube sex and nudity guidelines. And also make sure that you read the comment sections and get a good idea of how the audience actually feels about these videos. You'll see they're all sexually gratified. With all that said, let's begin. Let's go ahead and start with boob pasties, as it seems quite poetic to do so, since that seemed to be such a controversial thing with my Flip Witch video. Just search boob pasties, and boom bada bing, you got just that. These ladies are bouncing up and down and wiggling their goods at the camera, only wearing boob pasties and panties. Next up, naked yoga. Now, you'd think this category would have been nuked by YouTube when Muda exposed it years ago. And you'd be right, but just because the nudity is gone doesn't mean the thirst is. These ladies just adapted. Look up naked yoga, sexy yoga, or sexy stretching, and you got a lot of ladies knowing exactly what they're doing. They know where to put the camera in everything. One of my personal favorites is Shu Vayu's holiday yoga video. <sighs> Very relaxing. Oh, would you look at that? It looks like 2.1 million other people also found it relaxing as well. Now, my favorite out of all these yoga videos has got to be the 360 bikini ones. If you haven't seen this, this is next level stuff right here. You can turn the camera 360 degrees in the video, meaning that you can choose what you're watching. The 360 yoga bikini videos that take place on a boat immediately shove booty right in your face. And the Star Is Born video has 8 million views. Gee, I wonder why, oh, oh. Sir Mix-a-Lot would most definitely approve. Speaking of bikinis, you have all sorts of sexually gratifying models on YouTube. Just search bikini models, lingerie models, and panty models, and you got yourself some sexy, beautiful women. Oh, and for people that like men, I got you. Just look up underwear models. You'll see more than enough bulge happening in that category. Next up, pole dancing. These ladies are doing very erotic things, sometimes stripping down to just boob pasties and a G-string. 
So it's sexually provocative, sexually gratifying, there's sexual gestures, sexual poses, and yet YouTube deems this appropriate for all ages. Sure, it's art, but it still falls under sexually gratifying. The funny thing about the pole dancing is that YouTube used it in their sex and nudity guidelines video, so it's quite ironic that it's here completely unage restricted on YouTube. Next up, sexy car wash. Just look up bikini car wash or sexy car wash and you got some very sexually gratifying content right there. Now, YouTube is going to try and trick you with all of this at first, showing you regular old videos near the bottom of the scroll, as well as censored playlists at the top. But if you keep scrolling past all that trickery, you'll get to the good stuff. These ladies are wiggling around, sexually dancing, showing their butts to the camera, giving lap dances to the audience, soaping up their bodies, and doing sexual things to not only the car, but each other. As I said before, this is completely against YouTube's sex and nudity guidelines, and yet they allow it. Sure, some of it is age restricted, but like I said, that just makes their claims even worse. Next up, twerking. Just search twerking butt twerk or booty shake and you got all sorts of sexually gratifying content. And don't you dare try to argue with me that twerking isn't sexual, because it most certainly is. In every instance I've seen it, when it comes to twerking, it always has a sexual and erotic connotation to it. It is absolutely made to sexually arouse and gratify. There is no room for argument here, which is why I shouldn't be seeing real young children in this category. But yet again, here we are. Well, since we're talking about twerking, it's time to expose YouTube's music industry, Vivo. Vivo constantly gets away with posting sexually gratifying and raunchy material, both audibly and visually. I'm not kidding when I say I was actually getting sick to my stomach when researching this stuff. I'm sure Vivo gets to post this filth because musicians fall under artistic or some BS like that, but that doesn't change the fact that even if that were the case, these videos should at the very least be age restricted. This is absolutely unacceptable and it shows how much of a joke YouTube really is when it comes to their values and how unimportant their guidelines really are. I don't have a lot of respect for rap music as it is, but after finding all of this, what little respect I did have dropped into the negatives. It also made any argument by any prudes that listen to this filth completely invalid. How dare you consume something so distasteful and go and blame other people for being degenerates. I thought I was at an Amy Schumer comedy show or something because these rappers couldn't stop talking about their genitals. Holy moly, they leave nothing to the imagination. The disgusting amount of detail that goes into saying, I'm a prostitute and I like sex and money is astounding. The ghetto dream that these rappers push is sad, very sad. And not only is it that, it's unhealthy. It's all materialistic, it's all based around stature, and it's all based around clout. It's all about the money, the drugs, the ladies, the alcohol, the name brand, the jewelry, the cars, etc. It's all very shallow. These ladies are basically glorifying being a high-class prostitute, and everyone else is glorifying being a gang-banging thug. This debauchery isn't just in lyrical form either. You have ladies twerking everywhere, full-on booty, sometimes in the bed, sometimes at a pool, sometimes at a strip club. Definitely a lot of sexual intent going on. You have ladies constantly in revealing sexual and erotic outfits, poses, gestures, and implications all throughout the video. What everyone is doing in these music videos is above and beyond any acceptability of YouTube's sex and nudity guidelines. And on top of it all, all of this isn't age restricted. It's not just rap though, though that's a big part of it. 
It's music in general. Look at Cobra, the lady that made the song on every PMV you know. What she's doing in her video is being sexually provocative, and what she's wearing is meant to be sexually gratifying and arousing. How about Dorian Electra? She has a music video where everyone is wearing clothing that says, I heart sodomy. And she sings about liking sodomy. Here's a funny one, Queen's Bicycle. Queen's Bicycle is age restricted, but the lyric video, which is the same video that just happens to have lyrics on it, is unage restricted and fun for the whole family. Like I said in the beginning, YouTube doesn't really care about the kids or the safety of anyone. They're just liars and hypocrites, and anyone that ever claims that they're here to protect your children is a liar and either trying to get something out of you. What about the children? The children? I don't care about the children. I just care about their parents' money. Or something out of the situation. Most likely both. The truth is, nobody cares about your kids except the predators. The only people that should be making decisions for your kids is you, the parent. It should not fall on YouTube to be the parent of your child. Be a better parent, pay more attention to what your child's actually consuming, and take accountability for your actions, or their lack of. We don't need to be a nanny nation, forcing everyone to put warning stickers on everything and censoring things just because you can't do your job as being a parent. Freaking use your common sense, stop being an idiot, or just win the Darwin Award already. Seriously, the more we baby these people, the more unbalanced everything will continue to get. With that tangent out of the way, let's continue. As you know, I'm a man of culture, so let's head on over to Africa and learn a little about a special ceremony called Umemelo. This ceremony that the Zulu people do basically celebrates the coming of age of Zulu women. Usually it's done at the age of 21, but it can be done at any age. In this ceremony, the women are topless and beautiful. Oh, and a cow or goat gets killed for the ceremony. I actually got to see a goat's neck get sawed through with a knife as it bawed and everything. Very culturally stimulating. On top of that, when looking this stuff up incognito, I was recommended a very gross thumbnail. The mutilation of the animals aren't real, however, it looks very convincing. YouTube, you restrict people playing violent and gory video games, and yet you allow these types of thumbnails to be recommended on your homepage? Dude, seriously, what is wrong with you? I want to make it perfectly clear. It's not just the sex and nudity that's the hypocrisy. I could also expose YouTube for all the unage restricted violent and gory content they have on their site as well. But we'll just focus on the sex and nudity this time around. Beyond that violent video though, YouTube said that they accept nudity within the right context. But what context are these Zulu women? Well, 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 YouTube, it looks like you're in quite the pickle. These women are saying that their culture and their bare breasts aren't inappropriate. What I really loved about all this is that they called out Google for being a racist. And I absolutely love that the whole Gemini thing just happened while I was researching this stuff. It's just so poetic. Next up, transparent clothing. Just type in transparent, transparent try-on, or transparent clothing, and you got the goods. Now the fun thing about this search result is if you search for it on a real porn site, you're actually gonna find it there. So there is no room for excuse for this type of content to exist on YouTube whatsoever. YouTube has no excuse. If porn sites themselves are getting this stuff uploaded to them, then you know what it actually is. Now let's go ahead and look at my Flip Witch video. Would that be re-uploaded to a porn site? No. Why? Because it's censored! Next up, wet versus dry. This category is ladies wearing clothing, usually white, and going into the shower and seeing what happens when their clothing gets wet. Wow, so scientific. This is certainly very educational. And lastly, this one baffles my mind. 
Belle Delphine, everyone's favorite e-girl, she made a sexually gratifying video promoting her OnlyFans in the form of a rap parody. Now, Belle Delphine's videos were age restricted, but for some reason, when I go back to her channel now, she's back by the way, they're all unage restricted except for two videos. YouTube actually reversed their decision to age restrict her videos. So wait, let me get this straight YouTube. Things that are blatantly sexually arousing and gratifying, not even hiding their intent, is a-okay. But my censored flip witch video, which is focused on gameplay and not sex, is problematic? Are you fucking kidding me? What a complete joke. What an absolute mockery. There's more that I could expose, like hentai spaghetti, MXR plays highly sexual thumbnails, Big Bank Cream's TikTok videos on YouTube, etc. But I think you get the point. Now that I've exposed all of this, I'm sure YouTube will scramble in panic to save face. Sure, they might nuke some of the search results I just told you about, like they did with Naked Yoga after Muda exposed it. But that's just damage control, nothing more. They certainly won't do anything with the music videos, and those are some of the worst defenders of them all. It doesn't matter if those music videos are art or not. According to YouTube's sex and nudity guidelines, they shouldn't exist at all on this site due to being sexually gratifying. But since they do exist, because YouTube's a liar and hypocrite, they should at the very least be age restricted. Look, YouTube, you're a piece of shit. Plain and simple, you have offended me more than you could ever know, and I bless the hour that holds your fall. You are a liar, a hypocrite, sleazy, slimy, and scum. You deserve the book thrown at you in every way imaginable. You're clearly guilty of many infractions, and you've received so much more than three strikes. You should terminate yourself now. We all created this machine together, and until we all collectively say stop and make it stop, it will continue to function the way it was created to function. So now I exposed YouTube for what they are. The rest is really up to you. I did what I set out to do. I exposed and humiliated YouTube on their own platform, and I will continue to do so every time they mess with me. I won't stop using YouTube, and I won't stop making content. It's a terribly toxic relationship, but I do intend to keep playing. Call me Frank Sinatra, because I did it my way, and I'll continue doing so. There might be some bumps along the way, but the most important thing is that I stay true to myself. Thanks for watching.